So in the last video, video 19, we worked on adding the WYSIWYG to our page manager. Now, the next thing we're going to work on is uh, the, we're going to start with the blog. Uh, whether we get the blog completely finished in the time allotted, I don't know yet. But there are there are a few more things we need to do the WYSIWYG that uh, behind the scenes that we'll, we'll work on a little later but for now this should suffice uh, the next step is the uh, the blog so what we what we need to do is start thinking about what what do we need out of a blog now granted this is gonna be a simple blog I want to give you guys the room guys and gals the room to expand on this taking what I show you and you can you know add remove things whatever but I want to give you at least the essentials and it really all starts with the database If we look at our database we really only have one table and that table is for pages <clears throat> so we need to create a new table to handle blog entries before we can do that we need to figure out what what elements need to be in there so I've created a Google Drive document uh, just a drawing and if people aren't familiar with Google Drives Google Docs um, it's, a, it's a nice handy tool to do some quick mock-ups and things like that so what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna draw out a couple of things here So we'll call this the kind of the title of the the table. And just make some more elements here. Shrink them down a little bit. Change the font for formatting just to show a little bit of a difference here. So first thing we need as always is an ID. then what comes next we're gonna need a title the body of the blog you could call it post or whatever you want to call it and then we're gonna want the date And then, as I always do, let's just put a status in here, just in case we want to turn it on and off later on. So that's a pretty good, simple mock-up of a blog. We have our ID to uniquely identify the blog entry a title, a body, a date, and then a status should we want to disable or you know take take it offline or unpublish it if you're familiar with WordPress that's a, that's a term they use uh, that that status field can help with that so let's go ahead and add this to our database so from here we create a new table we'll call it blog let's flip back to our drawing here one two five so we need five columns, hit enter, and I'm just going to go through and put in the names first. And then we'll talk about what these need to be. Now as usual, what I usually do is just use medium integer. I believe defaults to nine characters that's enough for our, our blog entries at this point uh, unless you are an extremely heavy blogger then we need to make this the primary index or primary key set it to auto increment 
then for our title, we want Varkar, and you know, whatever, give it 500. If we uh, decide that's too much, too little, we can figure that out later. We're done with that. Body, on the other hand, let's go ahead and make this for now long text, which gives it 900 million, whatever, I don't know how many characters, but it's enough to do a lengthy post. Then the date, you have some options here. You could just make it a date field. Um, I prefer using the timestamp. It allows us to have not only the date, but the, the actual time of the entry. It gives us more data to work with. And then status, of course. I usually make it an integer and one character. And then by default, as defined, one. So this way, anytime any entry is put in, it's automatically, well, as long as we're assuming one means active, it's automatically active. Now, if you want everything to be inactive and you want to change it later, then by all means make this a zero. So from the looks of this, we're done. Click Save. And there you go. We have our blog table. Now let's go ahead and enter in, or insert, sorry, an entry. We'll call this my first post. go. Timestamp is going to take the current timestamp by default. And status is 1, so it'll be active. Let's hit go. Now we have an entry into our blog. Now if we come back to Dreamweaver, let's open up our content folder here and let's take a look at the pages.php. And again, I'm working during the day so you can hear my family above me. Okay. So this actually has a pretty good amount of code in here that we, we can reuse. So let's go ahead and just save as Control Shift S if you're on a PC. And let's just call this blog. And we'll change the comment here to blog manager. Change the title to blog manager or the heading that is. And now we need to change this to select all from blog order by date. So hopefully everybody's familiar with how we did all this. So I don't have to go back over it. If, if you're not, please go back and, and check that out uh, when we were working on the page manager. Um, otherwise, this, this series will get extremely long and probably never finished. <clears throat> but, um, so there's some things we need to change here, too, on line 18. Page is now going to equal blog because we want it to load this blog.php. This link ID here can stay the same. Link name, we want to change that to title. And that's going to show the title of the blog of the blog. Now we may want to change that to date. I don't know. We may not have room to fit the whole title in, depending on how long, since we did give them 500 characters to to put in. This may not work as far as the the amount of space we have. So let's scroll down to our form. We'll, we'll work on this this insert and update um, or this update. Uh, deal here for or later for the form we need to change the form pages equals blog ID is still fine um, I was wrong all right actually line 42 let's change this to select all from 
blog where ID equals get ID. There we go. So now this will populate our form with the blog entry. So we want blog title. Let's go ahead and change this to date. And we'll change this to date. And remember this, this array here is holding the information that's coming from the database. And, and the key of the array is whatever we called, whatever we named the field in the database. So that's why we're changing this. And the title stays the same. And then down here to body, we can say blog body. We kept the terminology the same by using body. And that's something important to keep in mind. The more, the more often you can use the same terminology, the easier it is going to be for you to, to do things like this, reuse work you've already used. So we've got the title, the date, the body. Now let's flip back to the database. Title, body, date. The only thing we're missing is status, and we're not going to worry about that just yet. So all we need to do now is change our update query to update blog. Set title equals title. Date equals date. So we need to take make sure the title is the title. That's fine. Date is the date. Body is the body. And ID stays the same. So it's important to know that the more uh, the more often you use the same terminology on your sites or your, your your applications, the better. Because then look how easy it was for us to swap this out here. Um, now it just so happens we were lucky we had the same amount of fields uh, in the uh, uh, form, so that made it even easier. But this is going to make things really simple for us, at least at least at this point. So we'll save this and upload it. And then now we need a way to get to it. So we need to edit the, the main navigation. So if we open up the template.php in our functions folder, we'll see the main nav here. And all we simply have to do, and simply all we have to do is highlight this, copy, control C, Control V, and then we can put in here blog, change the page equals to blog, and then save and upload. And if we flip back to our page, we click home, we now see blog, click on blog, my first post, there we go. Now this is only part of what we need to do. There's a lot more we have to do. We have to be able to add posts, add pages. And then we also need to go to the front end here and replace this, this blog page here with a list of the blogs. So that's what we'll do in the next video.